Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You guys voted, so today I have a video where we are going to be starting in one of the most difficult places in the game and seeing if we can rise up and create a successful empire. Just a side note, I do plan on making more save your disaster games, but to do so I need you guys to send me your disastrous save files to this email here and in the description of this video. Just let me know what you were trying to do in the game and maybe what you think went wrong and I'll do my best to fix it and send you back your save files. Alright, that's enough waiting, let's jump right into this video. Okay, so here we are in an 867 start and you can see that we are actually playing as somebody who is the liege of the Duchy of Axum and the Duchy of Axum is the liege of the King of Abyssinia and what makes this start such a hard one is that we are actually a member of this organized Jewish faith here and both of our lieges, the Duke of Axum and the King of Abyssinia are both of the Coptic religion which considers our faith hostile meaning that they will try to get us to convert relatively soon into the game and if we decline that then they are able to revoke our titles without facing any penalties and pretty much make us lose the game. So our goal here is to survive as a Jewish uh, a Jewish realm in the middle of this Coptic and Muslim area of the map. So since we are a relatively small county here with only two domains, we don't have a lot of units. We're making good money only because we are actually our liege's steward here. And for that reason, I think the, our only way out of this sticky situation we're in is going to be to go down the intrigue route with the focus of uh, the first lifestyle here, which gives us agents acceptancy bonus as well as an intrigue bonus. And we're going to try to pick up some of these things that boost our uh, scheme success chance and our scheme power. And we're going to start by trying to kill our first liege here, which has pretty good success chances. So I'm going to hope that this plays out well for us and we get some good pop-ups. We're going to find a wife who has uh, some good martial ability and some intrigue because I think that's going to help us in case we need to put her on the intrigue focus. But for now I'm actually going to leave her on the domain focus just for the little bit of extra gold it's going to give us because we're going to need all the gold that we can um, get here so we can declare wars on people and press claims because we are a feudal leader so we will not be able to declare war on anybody um, unless we press a claim first using our uh, priest here. It looks like our liege actually died on their own. They were slain in battle. So that is pretty crazy. Okay, so our king has granted us to a new liege who is this duchy over here. Duke below us, but they are pretty weak. If you look at that, they only have 700 men, which is pretty much what we have. So I think what I'm going to do is actually start a scheme on them to claim their throne so I can go to war with them and actually get this whole duchy for myself. So I'm also running a um, claim on this county because I don't want this guy to get uh, in the four years it's going to take for this to happen. I feel like um, he's just going to get too strong and be able to make allies and get enough money also to hire mercenaries. So I think it might just be best to take him out with a um, a normal war, like a, uh, a war for my claims. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It says he doesn't have any allies and we have around the same amount of military strength. It looks like we should be able to take his, his county here. Okay, and just like that we won it. So now we get his land. Oh wow, this is crazy actually. So it looks like the king of Abyssinia just died. So now there's only a two-year-old in charge which is actually perfect for us because it'll give us some time to grow and hopefully rise up against them. So I'm going to start an independence faction here in case any of the other um, vassals of this person want to join, like this guy. Okay, so looking around, the people to my north are actually really weak. This guy only has 400 um, troops. So I'm going to go ahead and start fabricating a claim on this land to our north because what we really need now is to max out our domains so we can get as many units as possible and uh, as much gold as possible to be able to rise up and break out of the, the Abyssinian kingdom here. Okay, I don't know how this happened, but uh, so this two-year-old actually, or four-year-old now in charge of the uh, Abyssinian kingdom, their mother is actually married to the Byzantine Empire. So that means these guys now have an ally with the Byzantines who are pretty strong. 
but I can actually kill the wife of the Byzantine Empire with a 95% success chance, which kind of blows my mind considering like they're pretty far away from me. But it looks like a lot of people don't like her, so that's a good sign. <laughs> we got 10 agents joined for free in this murder scheme. So I think if we murder the mother of this child, they won't have an, al an alliance with the Byzantines and they'll be very weak again. And we might be able to break away from them a little bit easier. So we just got our claim also with um, this duchy to our north. And they are a super weak duchy, so these wars should be really easy. And we have to take these easy wars when we get them to get more counties. Because this area is so dangerous where we are. I must have tried um, doing this playthrough like five or six times already. And I can't tell you how many times it happened where... I was doing just fine and then my liege would just demand my conversion and then revoke all my titles or just give my titles away and it looks like this game might be the one we're able to get out of these first maybe 10 years and honestly I think that's the hardest part of this game. We are getting raided down here but honestly there's not much I can do about that right now. Okay here we go and it looks like we killed her so if we go over here. Yeah, you can see now they, the Abyssinian Kingdom now is not allied with the Byzantines anymore. So I think I'll let this tick the rest of the way because it is pretty dangerous going up here with all these hostile armies around. So I'll retreat my army just a little bit and hopefully let this tick to 100% because I am controlling the one county which I declared war for. Okay, and boom, just like that, we have done the war. And we do have to increase the control in these counties here, which makes me want to switch off of um, Intrigue and go down Marshall for the extra control bonus, because that would really speed things up. But I'm going to wait until I get this perk right here, which will give us a 25% uh, bonus to our hostile scheme success chance, because we still might need a hostile scheme or two to deal with this child who's in charge of the kingdom. Oh, I didn't realize this, but if we look over here, at the six-year-old who is in charge of our kingdom, I am actually the primary heir of her. So if we go to murder her, which we have a 95 success chance, we will actually get the whole kingdom of Abyssinia, which is crazy. Okay, so we got um, the perk on the intrigue tree, which we wanted. So I'm gonna switch to authority focus just to get the control bonus here, because I now have two lands that are of low control. And the faster we get these lands up to uh, high control, the faster it'll help our military. And here we go. And it looks like we did it. So we killed um, the child in charge of the Abyssinian Kingdom. And now look at this. We are the Abyssinian Kingdom. So this is huge. We are also the head of um, the Ethiopian culture. Right away, I'm going to go ahead and start researching crop rotation. Because this is actually what we need to build the holy site here. Um, which is a part of our land right now. And let me just take a look at our kingdom in general. So we have um, the Abyssinian Kingdom, and it's currently comprised of three almost completed duchies, and I think we hold one of these duchies. So we hold this one here, and I'll probably want to hold this second duchy here of Gondar, because that's the duchy that holds that has the Grand Temple that I can build. So I think if I hold uh, all the counties in this duchy up here in the north of Axum, and I hold all the counties in Gondar, we should be good. And that means that I can start granting away some of these duchies in this lower, uh, granting away some of the counties in this lower duchy here. I'm also going to be going around trying to demand conversion from any of my vassals who really like me. Oh, and we're one stewardship point away from being able to hold seven domains without any penalties. But I think that'll be okay if I just hold seven out of six for now, because holding one too many counties doesn't have too, too many penalties. Converting my vassals is gonna be huge because then they'll also start spreading my religion But other than that it looks like we are actually on track here in this game. We now have 2,000 units Which does seem like more than most of our neighbors So we should be safe from invasions for now and we can spend some time just building up our realm I'm also gonna go ahead and start converting some more of my counties here to my Jewish religion because right now, pretty much all my land here is Coptic. I'm just having a look at our new kingdom that we acquired here. And you can see most of our land is mountains and hills. So I went out and I picked up some pikemen. And I'm actually going to increase the size to two. Because these guys, you can see, have a bonus in mountains and hills to their toughness. Which is pretty much their health stat. We do have a major gold penalty when having our army raised. You can see the 
the maintenance, the max is minus 11, which is going to be bad for our income. So I'm going to have to work to get our gold per month income up pretty quickly around our empire. I'm thinking of moving my capital over here to Axum from Gondar because uh, the development you can see is pretty low here and we're getting a bit of penalties from that anyway. So I think I'm going to go ahead and move our capital to Axum. I think that's where it was before when the other person was in charge of the Abyssinian kingdom anyway. And I think that should help both our gold income and just our general progression of this area. I'm going to go ahead and build the hill farms here because they are the economic building for uh, hill terrains and they're not as good as farms and fields which you can build in plains tiles but you know since we only really have hilly land it's gonna have to do for now our other vassal is ready to be converted because we swayed him enough to get his opinion up with us so now all of our vassals should be converted into our religion and you can already see they are also converting some of their lands to the lovely organized jewish faith that we are playing as Okay, now I picked up some of the perks I like for I like to have for increasing the control in my area. I think I'm going to go ahead and switch over to stewardship because um, I want to pick up some of these perks that let me build things quicker and cheaper because I do want to get my land developing really quickly here. Looks like we got some peasant rebellions going on here, but these are going to be super easy to crush. Easy as you like. And this guy here from across the Red Sea has actually declared war on us for um, what looks like this duchy over here. And if I'm going to be honest, I kind of want would want to just surrender this because I don't need it. But I don't think these guys are too strong. It looks like they have a little bit less troops than me. So I'm going to just run my guys over here and we should be able to defend against them. But I would say we should be able to win this battle. <coughs> Yeah, and they're running away now. And even on neutral ground, we still won the battle, which is pretty big. The only problem is that it sucks having to keep this army raised. So I really want to, like, disband them every time, but then it takes four months. But I guess four months really isn't that, isn't too long. So I'll just wait for them to come back before I raise them again. You can see our gold per month is up to 5.7 now, which is pretty good. And we do have enough to build some more buildings here in our capital, but I think I'll hold on to my gold just for a little bit here. What I will do is start increasing the control in these areas because low control means low men and low money. Okay, so we successfully defended that war and now we're going to get a good bonus to our gold, our faith, our uh, prestige. So now that we are big enough, it looks like we have the ability to declare holy wars for people. Oh my goodness. So we actually, right um, before these guys jumped in to attack us, we actually hit 100% war score because we got lucky and captured uh, the person's heir. So that was probably the fastest war I'll ever have. I just have to take one county. And um, I think what I'm going to do is I had given this land to uh, this vassal before. And I think I'll just grant him um, some more of this land that's nearby because I don't need it. And he should be able to fight off this other guy who is actually not part of our, our religion anyway. So I finally feel like I'm out of that bind that was the early game, which was super painful. But now that we're looking like um, we're lined up to be successful here, and I feel a little bit more comfortable to play the game like I normally would. I think I'll keep um, taking land from all these weak people around me because as you can see there are some kingdoms being formed and also this duchy to my south who was, was raiding me the whole game um, is actually pretty strong too so I'll try to take out all these weaker guys near me first before taking on some of the stronger people so I successfully took this duchy who was below me here and I'll have to create the duchy later but for now I'll just give all this land away and I'll find a nice good person who has high stewardship is of my culture of my religion this person actually does look pretty good, so we'll give him all four of those, and then when we have enough money to create the duchy, we probably will, and then give that to him later. Next on the chopping block are these guys right here, but unfortunately they're a little um, realm which is comprised of a bunch of different duchies, so it's probably going to take uh, multiple wars to get all their land. That's not the end of the world, so I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. I also started going down the learning tree just to get the... Uh, 
scientific perk because I do want to get crop rotation as fast as possible, although it probably will take me to my next character's life before I can get that. Okay, so I was just I was just talking about this, but these guys to my south have been a major pain in my ass. The entire game raiding me and just being super annoying. And it looks like they finally decided to declare war against me for this county down here. So we're gonna have to fight them and I'm I'm going to feel so good once I completely destroy them. So I should be able to take both of these if they group up, but if I'm able to catch one of them first, that would be amazing. I should be able to catch one here and then the other one and boom, that's perfect. A huge battle. This is actually pretty interesting. I just want to battle with a stack of like a thousand. I'm about to run into a tile with a stack of 1,800 and I have 3,000 so like there's no way it's, it says I'll probably lose but like there's literally no way I would lose in this situation I have no idea why it would happen so I'm in interested to see what's gonna happen here if I run when I run my my dudes here and I fight this stack here I want to see why it says we'll probably lose so it just went to even right before the battle started and as you can see we are definitely not losing so we ended up winning and they actually killed more guys than us so I guess it was just because um, the battle score was gonna be really bad but you can as you can see from that you still win the battle so sometimes it's not the best to actually pay attention to those little uh, indicators which say if you're gonna win or lose I'd say like 85% of the time they're accurate but sometimes you just know it's gonna be complete bullshit if you have like double the amount of units that they have in other news my other son Oh my goodness, just turned 18 and he actually has really good stats. So I have two sons right now, but this was like the heir that I'm going to, that I was scheduled to play as and he is awful. Like, look at these stats. Hello darkness, my old friend. Really, really bad. But this guy actually has decent stats and he's zealous, which is kind of cool because we are going for like a, a kind of faith game here. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is disinherit this guy here does cost my renown which I do not like to lose but you know you got to do what you got to do sometimes and we finally destroyed these guys so I get to enforce our demands we get some good money from that so we just beat these guys in a defensive war but right away we can launch our own offensive war for their duchy and you can see he has actually zero gold right now so if I declare a war he shouldn't have that much money so he won't be able to buy mercenaries or anything and we just beat him once so it should be relatively easy to beat him another time right here We've ran his units up into this mountain tile, but you can see if we attack there, I think we would win the battle, but the bonus they would get from defending in mountains is so high, I would lose a lot of units. So I think I'm not going to go ahead and um, attack here. I think I'm just going to wait it out for them to either come down or eventually they should start just losing their supplies. So we can actually choke these guys out here on top of this mountain. Okay, so it looks like they just moved off the mountain and we should be able to catch them over here in this field. Or maybe in this field, they are very quick somehow. Okay, and we finally caught them. And we were able to beat them. That should help the war score a lot. Didn't realize I'm in two wars right now. I'm not sure where this war came from in the north. Okay, so we finished this first war here. And man, does it feel good. Enforce our demands. And we get all of these guys land. So they still have uh, their duchy over here, but like, I think we greatly crippled them. Okay, so it looks like my character is about to die soon. Yeah, I'm on death's doorstep. But I think we're all ready to go into our next character's life anyway. So we shouldn't have any problems here. So we died. At the age of 70, he survived a pretty good life, this guy. And he did a great job getting control of the kingdom of Abyssinia. And now I get to play as my son who of course somehow managed to get wounded and flagellant. Like I literally just gave him a piece of land like a year ago and he's already completely lost. And we are still in this war, but now once we take this title here, it should help a lot. How can he take this land with only 36 men? Like that seems so stupid to me. So for this character, I think I'm gonna go down the learning tree because I do want to get crop rotations and onagers online pretty quickly. Oh my goodness, so this is quickly turned into a shit show. The Egyptians have now declared war on us with these people um, for all of this land here, which I don't really want to lose, but it's gonna be pretty hard if they have a, a 
3,000 stack army helping these guys. And then these people to my south have actually decided to also declare war on me for this county here, which I don't mind as much losing, so I'll try to deal with this one in the north first. But if the Egyptians are actually going to come down with 4,000 men like that, I don't think we will survive very long. We might have to surrender some land here. Honestly, I think we will have to just surrender this for now because we're in debt and we can't deal with all these wars at once. So now we are in big debt, but we'll have to get out of it quickly to retake all this land that we just lost. Honestly, considering the transfer of power and how uh, hard it can be sometimes, I don't think we did too badly. We definitely lost some land, but I don't think it's the end of the world. A few moments later. So my character is 46 now. I've been taking a little bit of land slowly but surely from a few weaker um, neighbors. And you can see we're looking pretty big now. Uh, you can see we actually got our gold income up to 12 gold per month, which is really good. I'm pretty happy about that. And I am saving currently to be able to buy the uh, Grand Temple in this county right here. But other than that, you can see we're doing quite well. We don't have any factions coming up against us. And um, some of our neighbors are getting pretty strong. Like these guys here somehow have 5,000 troops. And uh, even these guys aren't too bad with their alliances. I have to watch out for these two, but I think I'll be able to expand pretty easily to my east uh, as we continue this game here. Okay, so we have enough, so we're going to go ahead and start building the Grand Temple. So this right here is going to get us um, 2 gold per month, plus 20% gold in this county, which is going to be really good, as well as a little bit of a development boost, and we also get uh, some piety, some renown, and discounts to our men at arms and stuff so some really really good benefits from getting this it's gonna look really cool up here in the mountains too since we also went down the stewardship tree we we're able to pick up these two perks right here which will take off a lot of time in uh for building this so normally it would actually be i think a six year build time but since we got those perks now it's only four years which makes it a lot um, more valuable and we've finished the grand temple so let's take a look at it it looks like it's right on top of the castle what is going on there is that a pool like what is this here nevertheless that's earning us four gold per month now from this one tile and that is really good because it's in mountains there's not really an economic building other than the uh the ore mine or the quarries so i think i'm gonna go for hill forts because this is gonna be a target where people are gonna want to raid um the 20 percent gold will actually help so i'll keep upgrading these two with the both of the pastures and the um, quarries because that gold will just stack with this 20% bonus that we're getting from the Grand Temple. If we take a look at the development map, you can see that we have been boosting it in our capital quite a lot. It's at 18 right now. So looking at like this part of uh, East Africa where we are, I would say we're definitely the most developed land. And um, the only thing coming close is Mecca across the Red Sea. If we look at the faith, you can see we actually spread our religion all over our um, our control here because we have been converting all of our vassals. So just when I say how well we were doing in this game, we get a war declared on us. It says they have 11,000 um, troops, but I'm not sure where that number is coming from because when I take a look at the guys who declared war at me, they look like they have about... troops because it is this duchy here of Damot but they are allied to these big guys over here who have 5,000 troops and the rest of their allies are kind of their own vassals which I'm pretty sure can't join this war anyway so this might be a bit of a challenge to deal with and the problem with this game is because I am like the only Jewish region pretty much like in the whole uh in the whole game other than these jewish guys up here the problem we're having is that it's really hard to make alliances like i was looking for a new wife and if i sorted by strongest allies the only allies i could find were people already in my kingdom that being said we could be able to do some kind of quick invasion here right as the war starts and as I hit play and maybe take their capital out and kill some of their units and then have a one-on-one -on -one with these guys up here who have pretty much a, the exact same military strength as me 
So we're gonna have to see if we can do that. We actually got some new champions recently. So that's definitely gonna help. You can see we have some guys who are pretty strong. Not the best, but definitely not the worst. So we'll have to see what we can do here. Okay, so we just won that first battle. And it was a pretty big one. And uh, it looks like they have their army coming in for more. But if they come in staggered, kind of like they're standing right now, we might have a chance to beat them. But it definitely could be tight. It might be a risk to do this here, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. So we got 5,000 men chilling here. Oh yeah, and it looks like they're coming in. But it looks like not their whole army, so that's actually huge for us. Oh yeah. This actually is perfect, because we should win this too. Come on, boys. Okay, let's look at the damages. So that was a big battle. We killed a little bit more than we lost. I wish that number was a bit higher, but that's okay. We probably can catch these guys off guard, or we can take the... Um, the capital here but i think we'll go for the for the unit kills right now because we have them split up we want to keep their armies split up generally so that uh we don't have to fight a big force all at once okay this might be my chance i was just waiting for them to come and attack me and i was chilling on these mountains here and it looks like this group is coming for me 1.5k so we should be able to kill these guys pretty easily and then they're gonna come at me with another 6,600 probably, so we might have a chance to win if we're on the mountains, but maybe not. If we don't win this battle, I'm just gonna have to surrender this land here. Like, there's literally nothing else I can do if against 8,500 men. So we'll see what happens here. So we should get some big numbers here, which is gonna be good. Oh, actually, these guys aren't even gonna join the fight. And I'm gonna have to do it. Like, these are the best, this is the best potential battle situation I'm gonna have against all these guys, so I have to just shove all my units in there and pray now. Oh no, it doesn't look good. Oh man. Oh my goodness, this is so close actually. We need big numbers here. We need big rolls, big rolls, come on. Oh my god, it's happening. No way. Oh my goodness, that is big. Wow, look at those numbers. Now they're separated, I might be able to do something if I can pick them off one by one when they're retreating. Okay, we actually are catching all of them here separately too, so this is really big. We're getting so many victories here, but we're barely killing any of their units. They just have so many people. That is the problem. We are losing about the same amount that they are gaining every time. Okay, so here they come again. Oh, and it looks like they're backing out. So this is good. If they keep attacking us one at a time like this, we will actually stand a chance. Like, that is really big that we just won all those wars. I really want to... Okay, so we could white piece these guys. So it looks like they only have 3,000 men, and we actually have 3,800. So honestly, looking at how many men they have, I think it's a good time to start taking my land back. Okay, so I took back my land here, but I let their units kind of regroup a little bit. But you can see our war score is 62, so we could white piece them now at any moment in this war if we wanted to. Oh my goodness, he formed a new alliance. That's so annoying. So they have 8,000 men again. They have a group of 2,600 mercenaries. Like, where are you getting this money when you're just a tribal ruler? So I guess we'll just have to white piece them here because they have so many units now. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and white piece these guys. Oh, and now we discover onagers. <laughs> like a second too late. Well, at least we successfully defended that war. We didn't win it, but getting white piece will be pretty good and it should let me, it should give me enough time honestly to maybe um, take some land from these guys and make them a little bit weaker. Man, these tribes are getting ridiculous. So this guy here has a one county realm, but he somehow has uh, 1600 levies. And I went to take a look at his county that he holds here and just look at all these levies he's getting. He's getting 1,200 from one county because of the fortified level 2 tribal hold. And he has all the um, military buildings uh, at rank 2, giving him so many men. Like, these, that's really powerful. Like, I know being tribal is good for, uh, for having a lot of units, but that is really crazy. The only advantage we're going to have is when we can start upgrading buildings like these to their 2nd, 3rd, 4th tiers to give our, our units a little bit more damage. 
to be able to deal with it but for now it's almost impossible to kill these guys they just have so many units that being said i think i will declare war on this guy down here because he i need to kill him before he can do another alliance with um those other strong tribes and just come at me all at once and right now we have a little bit more than a thousand troop uh advantage on them and we have onagers now okay so we just got into this army here right before they were about to take our land and we're actually getting huge bonuses here so just like that after taking their capital and winning one battle with them we got 100 percent war score so we can enforce demands and we just crushed these guys they should not be able to rise up against me anymore I really think Onagers are helping um, against these tribal guys because look at the siege progress before we would be getting like 1.1, 1.2 and now we're getting uh, well like 1.8 on our sieges which is just really helpful. Uh oh, so it looks like I died and uh, I didn't have any sons so I'm playing as my, one of my daughters now and she's decent so far like she has the uh, ambitious and honest trait which are two okay traits to have but the good thing is she got the bossy childhood trait so i was able to, able to put her on the education focus this is the faction they want to lower the crown authority and i might just do that because i don't really need to be revoking anybody's um land anyway right now so i'll just lower the crown authority on my own and if we have a populist faction we should be able to take care of that pretty easily you know what i have turned 16 and i got some pretty good stats I'm pretty happy with all my perks and everything, and I think I will be a murdering queen. Um, I'm going to pick up strategy focus to get my marshal up a little bit, and I married a giant so that hopefully our kids will also be giants. And the good thing about that is that I can put this guy on chivalry focus, which will give us even more martial ability. So now we're at 18 martial, and you can see our units just skyrocket because of that. And I think it's time to conquer all these little realms that are beneath me. To declare war for duchy, I have to be the faith, at least the uh, faithful level of devotion. So first, what I'm going to do is go on a little pilgrimage, I think. And when I get back, I should be ready to declare war on a ton of people. So I'm finally declaring war on these guys here who have given me so much trouble this game. They lost a bunch of troops out of nowhere. Maybe like 1,000, 2,000. Maybe their mercenaries ran out or something. Ran out or something. But uh, I'm finally taking advantage, and I'm going to kill them because they have been bothering me pretty much this whole game. Just like the people who are down here. You can see I've also been cleaning up a little bit here, and uh, our empire is definitely looking pretty good. These onagers are really saving us here. They're so useful. And just like that, we have finished our war, and it's for a bunch of land too, which is going to look super nice. But look how great our kingdom is. It is really looking good. Look at the religion screen too. We almost converted all of the uh, counties in here, converted. And we have a very strong uh, Jewish Ethiopia going for us right now. You can see just how much money we're making now. It is a ton of money. We're also making good amounts of prestige and faith. And we have lots of renown too. Okay guys, I think this challenge is over. I think I successfully survived in Ethiopia as a Jewish ruler. You can see we're still Jewish here. And um, we've expanded our, our kingdom quite a bit since the start of the game. Uh, the borders are looking pretty good. I could take the rest of these small areas around me, but it would just take so long. And uh, I'm pretty tired. I just gotta go to bed. I think I'm gonna call the episode here. This was a great challenge. We'll take a look just at the religion screen and you can see our Jewish faith is doing super well down here. Cornered uh, the Coptic religion and are almost ex gonna make it go extinct here and replace it with our own Jewish faith. Honestly, the start of this challenge is super hard, but once you're able to get out of that and once I was able to run enough murder schemes and get control of the kingdom of Abyssinia, the game went pretty smooth from there. It was definitely painful dealing with all the uh, tribal regions that were nearby that were just constantly raiding and declaring wars with huge numbers of men, but we crushed those guys also. And now we're sitting here nice and pretty with our lovely Jewish Ethiopian family. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll probably continue doing this series and um, try some other hard starts that I saw either 
online or in the comments that you guys recommended to me. So if you have any other ideas for some places that are really tough to get going, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.